Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the different types of liver failure and the symptoms of liver failure. The symptoms of liver failure vary depending on the degree of liver destruction. Of course, jaundice is the first thing we see and it is the hallmark, along with itchiness. The increase in estrogen will also cause spider angiomas and erythema in the pons. The liver makes the clotting factors so without these factors, the patient will have petechia and purpura all over the body. The venous blood reaching the liver will also stagnate and build up backwards, and this will cause portal hypertension. Portal hypertension results in esophageal varices, gastric varices, ascites, T. splenomegaly, and anorectal varices. Hepatorenal syndrome is also a big concern and it is defined as having renal failure with no obvious cause other than liver failure. So for some reason, the liver damage will also be associated with kidney damage. Fluid buildup will cause cardiomyopathy and peripheral edema. And if untreated for a longer time, we will see neurological symptoms such as astraxis and hepatic encephalopathy. In cases of pregnancy, we have two conditions that are associated with liver failure. The first is the intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. This is due to idiopathic obstruction of the biliary tree, which means that the biliary tree that normally transforms the bile from the liver to the intestine will get blocked. And so the liver will make bilirubin and it will be conjugated, but it will not be excreted. So these patients will have high levels of conjugated bilirubin. And of course, this classically presents with itchiness of pregnancy. Lab-wise, we will see high levels of AST and ALT. This condition resolves after pregnancy. The other condition also associated with pregnancy is the acute fatty liver of pregnancy. This is an acute and severe fatty liver failure that occurs in pregnancy and we don't know the cause. Basically, the patient will have severe abdominal pain with all symptoms of liver failure. And we'll come to the symptoms in a second. The levels of AST and ALT will be skyrocketing. And of course, unconjugated or indirect bilirubin will also be high because the liver is not working, so it doesn't conjugate the bilirubin. And the third type we have is the alcoholic hepatitis. This occurs in patients who drink more than 14 drinks a week. And of course, there is the classic increase in AST to ALT ratio. The more they drink, the higher the ratio and the more symptoms they'll have. Next, we have the non-alcoholic hepatitis. This is any other cause that causes destruction of the liver, mainly diabetes or obesity. Some medications can also cause this, like statins. The presence of pregnancy can exacerbate this problem. The hallmark for this type is rising AST and ALT in equal levels. The treatment of any condition depends on the cause. If you know the cause, you should treat it. Sometimes as the medication are the cause, you should stop the medication and start alternative ones with different classes. A very important thing to note, especially for exams, is that the effective statins don't last more than a month or so. So if a patient comes in with symptoms of liver failure, and they only stopped taking the medication a few months back, then the medication is very unlikely to be the cause of this liver failure. The complication of any liver failure, if untreated, is of course cirrhosis. The liver has an incredible regenerative ability, but if damaged and unrepaired for longer times, it will have cirrhosis. Cirrhosis can be confirmed by ultrasound or by taking a liver sample and seeing a lot of fibers. In any way, the presence of nodularity and fibrotic activity within the liver indicates cirrhosis. Unfortunately, if the level of cirrhosis is reached, it is untreatable and not reversible. And that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helped.